Okay, these mistakes are extremely deadly because while HTML and CSS is not actually that hard, if you're making one or more of these mistakes, it can feel incredibly hard, okay? Now, here's the thing. I was a front-end developer for four years and I now run Freemo, the freelance developer bootcamp. to see the same common mistakes emerge over and over from beginners. And I think unless you're aware of these mistakes, HTML and CSS can just feel way harder than it actually is. So in this video, we're gonna talk about eight very specific mistakes that you wanna be aware of so you can avoid when you're writing HTML and CSS. And even if you're a bit more experienced, you might not actually know about this stuff. So let's get into those mistakes right now. And by the way, did you ever get an iced coffee where they just dump ice in the hot coffee? It doesn't really work. Uh, that's what I have here. So let's get into it now. Okay. Okay, we're gonna go through eight mistakes in this video and mistake number one is trying to code all your HTML up front. So I'll see people look at a design or think of what they wanna build and they'll try to write all the HTML in a row. So they'll be like, okay, I need a container, I need a div, then I need a UL, then I need three LIs, one, two, three, and they'll write in all the content and everything like that. Or they'll actually use Emmet, which is like this, UL, LI times three, and they'll write a super long string that is generating their code for them. And if you do this, uh, you should stop doing it. <laughs> and it's not, look, it's not your fault. A lot of YouTubers do this. They code out all their HTML, you know, at once in the beginning, and you're just like, wow, that's so cool. They do it so fast. But here's the thing, that's not how it really works. Uh, the reason for that is you don't always know how they're gonna work together initially. For example, if you have three elements aligned left to right, like let's say you have something like this, you have three boxes uh, that each show some content on your page. And this is just an abstraction for what your design might look like that you're trying to build. Uh, so if you're experienced, you could reasonably think, okay, we're gonna use uh, flex for this, display flex and CSS, and we're gonna uh, align things left to right. But there could be uh, you know, a box within this box, okay? Uh, and it could be some text and then the box above it. And the thing is, until you write out uh, the CSS, you don't know exactly how the HTML is gonna look because you might need you know, three containers to make this layout work. So the bottom line here with tip number one, which is don't write your uh, HTML out all at once, is you're gonna end up rewriting it or changing it anyway. And you may also have containers you don't actually need. So you might create all these divs that it's just unnecessary to use because you can achieve the same result with CSS and do it in a very specific order, which is gonna lead us to tip number two. What is the order you code out your HTML CSS in? And I'm also very strongly opinionated about this, where you're gonna wanna go from outside in. So outside in, let me show you what I mean on a page, then I'll actually show you in code. So we're on the Wikipedia page for Ukraine and uh, it looks simple enough, but if you really dive into, you know, what does this HTML CSS look like? It's a bunch of different containers with different content inside of it. So when you start thinking like a front end developer, you can kind of see it in the matrix of this page. And what I see first is a very big container outside the edge, all right? So you're gonna have this very big container and in my view, you should always code this first, okay? Uh, then second, let me just change the color. What are the next biggest containers? Well, I see one up here at the top. There's like a header, okay? There's this sidebar. And then there's this big main page content, okay? So what we're doing by thinking in containers is we're allowing ourselves to build from outside in, which just makes things a lot easier for one simple reason. And it's because you can segment your page appropriately from the beginning. So if you tried to like build this sidebar first before anything else, that's great, but you might've coded it in a way where this is very difficult to add in later let's say you did like a position absolute on this, then everything's gonna be messed up and very hard to change down the road. So how do we actually do this in code? Well, let's open our very basic uh, HTML page here. And we have just this generated code. So in the case of like this Wikipedia, let's just really quickly create these three sections. Now things are appropriately Filling out, let's see, is that enough space? 
Uh, I think, yeah, that is ex almost exactly what we want, uh, how much space we want this to take up. And this is gonna give you the most sustainable solid foundation for not running into problems later when you have more code, which is always gonna be more complex. Okay, now the next thing I wanna talk about is class naming. You can notice we did container, sidebar, content container, uh, and this is a simple tip, but you just want your class names to make sense, okay? You want them to be descriptive. So you don't wanna just call your class ABC or uh, uh, out, for example. You want it to be very specific, and this container class is actually pretty, pretty poor naming convention here because it's too generic, but I could do like outer container or outer most container. That would actually be better. Uh, we have some of this built in with semantic HTML. So our class name then uh, becomes our element name, for example, here header. But if I wanted to get even more specific, I could say, you know, top header, right? And so takeaway here should be uh, your class names. They should be nouns. They should be descriptive and they should make sense. Okay. Okay. So class names should be descriptive. They should be nouns. What about class names to avoid? Well, I would say anything actually relating to style should go in your CSS and not your HTML. So this is a bit controversial because people, maybe they will put red background here, but uh, this really limits what we can do with our CSS selector later on. And we can only ever uh, make it this descriptive. You will see this used in libraries like Bootstrap where it will talk about the uh, CSS, but in general, I think you should you know, stick to being descriptive about the uh, location and the function of your HTML rather than uh, talking about the styles in your class name. Okay, now this next one is also super simple, but it's absolutely huge. Okay, so I just want you to imagine if we had way, way, way more HTML, um, and CSS. So let's say we had 500 lines of HTML here and a thousand lines of CSS, which is still relatively small. Now, let's say I'm looking for the styles for this class. All right. And uh, this could even be in my CSS file. Uh, so let's also put it here. Uh, so what I see people do a lot is they will say, okay, it's outermost container. Then they'll go to their CSS file and they'll just be scrolling through. They'll be scrolling, scrolling, looking for the name. But people, look, there's this thing called control F or command F, right? Command F, outermost, it'll take you right to it. So anytime you can use control F, whether it's Google, uh, VS Code, whatever, you should be using it. That will take you exactly where you need to go. And if you do use VS Code, then you can do command shift F and you can search for all appearances. So outermost, container, you can search for all appearances in all your files. So I know half of you are saying, yeah, this, that's really obvious. I already do that, but I know at least half of you just start doing it right now and never stop. Okay. Okay. Next tip. And let's continue to use this HTML. We already have a uh, mistake I see people making is not testing on all device and browser widths. So you might be aware that within Chrome, you can use dev tools and you can simulate different devices, right? So if I do command option J and then I click this little device thing here, then I can do iPhone, I can do iPad and I can say, oh, okay, so this, I want to move here on the iPad size and then I'll write my responsive CSS. But what a lot of people don't do, and I did this myself for a very long time, is they don't think of everything. So they don't test, for example, the vertical axis. Do things still look good if your window's like this small, right? Uh, and then also a big one is, what about someone who has a screen bigger than yours? Okay, that can actually be quite hard to test. Uh, one way to do it is to zoom out. And that will not give you an exact layout on a larger screen, but it will kind of simulate that. Uh, and it's better than nothing. And then the last one is, and most people don't know this, even if you do the device, uh, view here. If this is a serious website that's going to be going live, you want to test it on your phone too, for real, because it can look different. I mean, this thing isn't perfect. So definitely go to the URL on your, on your iPhone or your mobile device, uh, validate it, make sure it looks legit because you know, a simple mistake like that, it can make you kind of seem like an amateur if you're, if you're coding on someone's you know, important site. Okay, now the next important one is not deleting unused code. Okay, let me give you a quick example of this one. And I'll do that by just adding a, let's just do an H1 here. Okay, and we'll do test body uh, text. Okay, so let me just build up this next 
issue that people have. So let's say I wanted to center this, this H1 here within the div and I just, I couldn't quite get it and, and I didn't know exactly how to do it. So I was trying a bunch of different things. So I was doing this, I was doing a margin uh, left, oh, 50% maybe. Uh, so I added that and that didn't quite work. So I did margin auto and then I did justify content uh, center and uh, that didn't work. And then I do text align center and that did work. Okay. So what is the problem here? Well, I will see people, they'll do something like this and then they won't delete the code that didn't work. And this is so huge because you don't know what's actually centering this. So if you want to go and change it later, uh, which one of these do you change? Which one of these do you remove? So my next point is you want to delete all unused code that you can. Okay. So uh, if I know these three didn't work, I want to immediately delete them because I only want the code that's actually doing something. Uh, I would even take this to another level. If you forget what something is doing, like let's say, oh, do I actually need this height? Try deleting it, save it, and then say, oh, okay, I didn't need it, so bring it back. Okay, so if you ever forget what something's doing, try to delete it and then bring it back. And this will just help you stay a lot more organized, stay cleaner, and <laughs> your quality of life will just be higher. Okay, now the next tip is related to just CSS, and it is really, uh, grouping things together appropriately. So the convention is to do broad uh, type to specific type, but it's not quite that simple. Uh, but what we, what we can do is we can definitely put the element selectors at the top of our CSS, okay? So anything without a class like HTML, uh, header, body, and especially, you know, if we're doing some HTML body or star selector stuff, we would always put that at the top as well as variable names at the top. And usually what you want to do is you want to group things from broad to specific, but within their grouping. So to be more specific, let's look at this content container selector. Okay. Let's just go straight there. Uh, below content container, I have a uh, header. So I might want to do an, an advanced selector on just that header, in which case I would take this and I would do direct descendant. And then I would say, okay, just for this header, I want to do um, change the background color to orange, for example. Okay, so uh, then within this content container, I have a div and an H1. So maybe I would just want to style that div. So I'll do content container div right below this. I'll do background color uh, gray. Okay, so that's my text container. And then within that div, I have a H1. So I want to do H1 and I want to change that text color to white. So what exactly am I doing here? Wait, I messed that one up. Uh, not background color, text color, color. Uh, so what exactly am I doing here? Well, I'm grouping things together in terms of their parent class. So we can say this header, this div, this H1, these are all child elements. So uh, these are all going to be together within my CSS uh, because the parent is going to be here and then the children are going to directly follow it. And then that rule applies recursively where if I have a uh, child within my child, now this will be the parent and this will be the child. So I know that's a bit confusing, but basically things that are uh, grouped together on the page are going to be grouped together also in your CSS. So we can just call this logical grouping of CSS rather than kind of putting everything in a random place. Okay, now just one more thing, and this one is probably pretty obvious, uh, but it's easy to forget and it's not obvious for everyone, is reusing CSS. Okay, so if I, for example, have some text I want to change to white, and this is a very specific selector just applied to this header, but let's say I have some text at the top, at the very top of the page, and it's like Wikipedia, H2, uh, Wikipedia, then in header, we can do, let's say navigation, put that in an H4 and then test body text. This could be our maybe article title, but let's say I did want to make all my text uh, white, like this text here. So what I don't want to do is put white everywhere. So let's say I want to, you know, make the H2 white. So I go to the appropriate place on my page sidebar and I do a sidebar, all the H2s inside there, color white. And then uh, navigation, I want to grab that one. So I go header H4, maybe like 
header is for color white. So what I'm doing right now, I don't want to be doing because I'm, I'm reusing a lot of uh, this color attribute on different elements. And if I know I want all my text to be white across my whole page, and maybe I have a few exceptions where I want to turn it back to black. Uh, well, you got to think about this logically and say, oh, this should be less specific. So maybe I make my default color up here white, and then I could just delete this. I could just delete all these all together. So I'm saving three, six, and then, uh, you know, nine lines of code. And that's just because I'm putting it in the appropriate place in the hierarchy. And this is part of the reason CSS is hierarchical or cascading, cascading style sheets. Uh, you want to make things the appropriate level of specificity. So, you know, if you know that color is being applied to all your elements or even multiple elements inside a container, you're going to want to put it as high up as possible uh, in, you know, the hierarchy. So you could call this rule not repeating yourself in CSS or rather just uh, using specificity appropriately. So with all that said, uh, I hope it was helpful. Hope you learned a thing or two, at least one trick from this video. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you want more videos like this one. Uh, anyway, I will catch you guys soon with a bit more variety. And uh, yeah, talk to you later.